I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right, it's official. I finally finished watching Demolition Man last night. Took me three sessions, but uh, I pulled it off. And uh, what a horrendous and wonderful movie it was. So, I am going to do some fun stuff now. Because last night, I went over to Kevin's, checked out the finished product of my Adams family, and boy, is it amazing. He, he outdoes himself every time, but I keep saying it, but he re-outdid himself yet again. The Adams family is just stunning. It's just the attention that he put into it, to detail, cleaning up all the metals, um, fixing all the weld issues with the scoops and just like, it's just, he put so much effort and energy and love into that machine and you can really, really tell. But look, now that he's done with that, I've got my LEDs back and it looks like I have almost everything I need. Just a little short on red 555s. But I bet ya, um, other than that, I should be good to LED the whole machine. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't have much time right now, today, it's Sunday, I'm going to go pick up the mother. We're going to do dinner and all that fun stuff, bring her over to the house. But uh, I've got a solid hour, so within that hour, you know, I should be able to LED the whole machine. So. Let's get started.
that looks. I've got a combination of skinny bulbs and fat bulbs. These are the fat bulbs. Coming to realize that I don't love the fat bulbs. They're a little tighter to fit. And I was hoping that, you know, trying to stick them in upside down to see if I ever need to change these bulbs from underneath, would I be able to? And it looks like I can, but I just had to center the sockets on these fatter bulbs so that they fit in without as much difficulty. So yeah, I just used a little flathead screwdriver to kind of manipulate the socket from above to make sure that it was nice and centered. Um, I went with skinny bulbs at the top here. I want to make sure that the lane guides fit. So, and then this bulb here is just being a little weird. It's not the bulb. There's something going on where this one is just dim. I don't know if you can really tell, but it ain't the bulb. So I gotta figure out what's going on. Probably a bad connection. So yeah, I'm gonna need me some red 5x5s. Five five Blue skinnies up here. I think I'm gonna, yeah, just start phasing away from all these fat heads. Cause those are even tricky to fit in that spot. Cause they're right up against the plastic. So um, if you go skinny, you're gonna run into a lot less issues. So I've got fatties everywhere. These are skinnies. So I think um, I got a lot, all the fatties from davisstillpinballrom.com. I think he has skinnies as well. So I'll make sure if I order from him again that we go skinny. But things are looking pretty damn good. Now that I've got top side LEDs done, I can do a few things like these lane guides and probably this whole plastic tunnel for the uh, car thing. I can't put on my middle main metal ramp yet, so I need some LEDs, but Corey Cook, LondonPinball.ca, who is a distributor for PinballLEDs.com, Eddie Durazio, might have some in stock, so I could probably get these locally, hopefully. Uh, okay, so I'm going to look into this weird bulb or socket, figure out what's going on with that, and then um, I will maybe install a couple plastics or start working on the insert LEDs. Alright, I decided to do some insert LEDs, so I unscrewed all these screws except this guy. We can see how things look under there. Gotta do this all very skillfully without dropping anything. It's not bad back there actually. I thought it was gonna be worse. So that's the nice and easy way to do things. Stick this guy on the bench and then just color match all the inserts. So, oh crap, there's a lot of red in there. Um, so I gotta hit up Corey soon. Okay, so a couple of tips when dealing with these lamp boards. While you have it out, you may as well reflow these headers. You know, some of them look a little sketchy. And these side mounted sockets, uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to pull out the LED, I mean the old incandescent bulb, well that's not so bad. But then cramming in the thicker LED, and you're like wiggling back and forth, puts a lot of strain on these joints, uh, solder points I should say. And you can see that, you know, don't look all that healthy right there. So, after you've installed the LEDs and there's no more wiggling gonna happen, it's a good time to just touch up the solder on these guys. 
Now I'm going to add new solder, but I don't have a third hand, so we're going to make all those joints much happier. Okay, that's as far as I can go without having red 555s, but I did just message Corey, and I am going to pop over there within the hour, and he's going to hook me up some of these and some of these potentially that I can stock back up. Probably should get some of those too. Maybe I'll take a photo. I'll do that right now of my LED bin so I can grab some more if I need when I'm there. But these ones will be red and this is a mix of natural white and warm white. I do warm for the orange and yellow inserts and natural for the white inserts. And then have a look. Solder has been redid. Much better. So I did that for all of the flat sockets. And yeah, all right, I'll be back in a bit. Looky what we have here. Oh yeah. All right, back in the basement. A moon has passed since I was here last. As in, it is tomorrow. And now that I got my LEDs from londonpinball.ca, I can do this zone under the ramp. So I had the one LED in there. And you can see it is a fat head. So I can't just have one fat head in there. I will use that for uh, underside somewhere. I got to keep everything consistent here. And that will look good. Okay. So, I should be able to complete this LED job now. I was thinking of originally changing that to uh, blue, but I saw on pin side the red action and it actually looked pretty darn cool. So, that will keep blue, obviously. I was originally red condoms. Um, I don't think I actually cleaned this ramp, so I'm not going to install it yet, but I'll just dry fit it. Where do you go? malfunction soldier what? both of these go in back behind there oh see I installed this prematurely I think this needs to go in behind there yeah okay well let's do this there <laughs> okay doesn't quite show the effect but uh, that's what happens when you get all antsy and you try and install stuff out of order. Now that ramp won't fit, so I just got to take off that back plastic. But anyway, I just kind of want to see how the LEDs looked through that. It looks pretty cool. I like it red. So, I am going to, uh, yeah, so I think that means topside LEDs are complete. Go back under the play field and finish those off. Okay, just five, I think it's five red LEDs to go on this board. I always spread my legs out, that's right, to ensure better contact. It's good to spread your uh, LED legs out like so. And I 
And one more to go. We'll install this and see what it looks like. So I cleaned up the area um, free of all the dust. And then I just took a paintbrush, dry paintbrush, to all the inserts to clean them up. I find a, a dry paintbrush is all you really need because it does a very, very good job. I used to use like a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. But I found that just kind of turned the soot into mud. And then I'm just spreading the mud all around. So then you gotta kind of go over it multiple times. Dry paintbrush works for me well. Okay, here we go. Now well, let's see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. I think we're gonna have to put it in lamp test to get a better idea here. Let's go do that. All lamps. Now let's see what it looks like. What the F? Half these things ain't working. And it's like every other one. What the fudge? This is really dumb. Okay, well, um, I'll be back after I figure this out. Shouldn't be too difficult. All right, I think I figured out what's going on here. Since this machine was in a very musty, damp basement, the sockets are a little bit corroded. So, if I do this, To the crusty guys. I mean, it's a little bit more maybe. Then I think that is going to be the resolution there. So, crusty sockets. Yeah, so it was definitely crusty sockets. That was the issue here. I have a decent stash of non crusty sockets. So instead of cleaning them all one by one, because I tried to clean the next one and it still didn't work. So, like, screw this. I have got some crud in that one. Got a bunch of good ones. So, I'll just put all those into the pile. And then when I get desperate and need those, I'll just clean them one by one. But, here we go. Much better. Hold on, I just got to hold the camera still. And then it should, maybe I gotta pan out a bit. I had it there for a second. There we go. I feel like I can't breathe or else it's gonna screw up, but. Have a look at that compared to that. My MTL, barely see that. These guys. Oh, my freezes look pretty cool, actually. Huh. They almost have a tinge of blue to them, but that's just probably the art over top of them. But that looks pretty cool. So why is that one not lit up? Is that just one I haven't done yet? Wait, no, I did do that one. That one. Ah, another crusty. All right, I will um, deal with this guy and report back. All right, looks like we've got some more issues with side-mounted sockets. Check this out. That looks like that joint there is pretty bad. So I'm going to yoink out this board and deal with it. 
Okay, getting pretty close to finished, the full LED job. But I do notice that none of the LEDs on this board are working at all. So what do we suspect that to be? Probably one of these wires? Or do you think it's all crusty sockets? I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six on there. Let's see if I push on this wire, if anything happens, no? These are, I think, the individual lights, the, all the red ones. And I think this is the common. But, uh, oh wait, looks like I missed one here too. Okay, well, I'll report back what I, with what I find. More crusty sockets. That's really what it boiled down to, so that's all remedied now. And let's have a look at the finished product here. Let me know if I missed anything. Doesn't really look all that great through the camera though, it's very flickery. If I hold still then maybe. Hold still, Michael. What if I zoom out? Does that help? Mm, not really. Zoom in? Mm, no. Alright, you're just going to have to live with flicker. I'm sorry. But, yeah, it is looking awesome. There's a lot of friggin' red inserts on this game. How many do I even have left? Uh, four. I got 20 off Corey. And I have four left. I thought 20 was going to be super ample, but it was just barely ample. Should I get that guy? Does that guy look LED'd? Oh yeah, that was part of the board. So he's LED'd. MTL is a little more visible now. And, uh, oh yeah, I was talking to my buddy uh, Eden Stam yesterday, and he wanted to give me a couple pointers because he, not so long ago, did a demolition man himself, and he's been watching my actions and my, I mean, watching the action. And uh, one really good tip he had for me is... Um, this rubber here, don't put on one that's too tight, which he did, and um, because it's a friggin' big pain in the ass to access this rubber to change it out. Now, if you watched my previous videos, you would have seen that this rubber was white, so it was changed at some point, and uh, you know you have to remove a lot of crap in order to do that. So. Eden had just, you know, shopped up his demolition man. Pretty much the same thing I'm doing here. Full tear down. Brought it to a show. And then I think he said day one, the friggin' rubber snapped. So I think he said at the show, he had to tear half the thing apart to change that rubber because you just have to. You can't have the ball like falling into this zone. So good tip there. Don't put on too tight of a rubber for here. I think this calls for a three inch maybe. But we'll see. I'm probably getting my rubbers tomorrow. Um, and yeah, he also suggested, you know, for anyone who does send out any chrome, you know, maybe first time chromers like myself, if you do run into a shitty job like this, you know, inspect it thoroughly first. I didn't really know. I've never done it before, so I didn't know what to inspect or how to inspect it. I just assumed it would come back perfect, like you know, most powder coating I ever get done. But uh, if you do get some chrome done and it looks crappy around the edges, like this stuff will peel right up. And um, yeah, send it back. Like here's, this is pretty crappy. Look at that. Send it back immediately and demand that they redo it properly. I got too far in the reassembly process before the thought even crossed my mind. I'm like, yeah, this is crappy. I'll just deal with it. But in hindsight, I should have 
told the guy to redo it, please and thank you, for 300 bucks for the set. You know, you would hope it would be a little better than that. So I think it was the, the prepping of the metals that was the issue in that case. But he did want 600 bucks, and I ended up getting it for 300 So maybe he just didn't put in as much effort as he would have if I had given him 600 bucks. But come on, 600 bucks? No, that's too much. And, uh, yeah, what else did Eden say? And another tip, like, if you're buying rubber, you know, just say you're buying six of this kind. Let's say at Marco Pinball. Let's say a three-inch. But you notice, if you buy ten, you get a discount. So, like, six rubbers will be a dollar twenty-five each. But if you get ten, they're a buck each. So, he suggests that just, you know, get up to that tier, save that money, stockpile your rubbers, so that, uh, you know, you have ample stash when uh, ordering rubbers if you're doing multiple machines, you know, throughout the years or within the year. And that's what I have actually done with my white rubbers. And it's definitely come in handy. I have a little bit of a stash of clear rubbers because I bought this kit from uh, Pinball Life. It was a sample kit. Not that one, and not that one, and not that one. These are rubbers I bought years ago that turned flesh on me. But this is what's left of the sample kit. This is a good deal at Pinball Life. And I keep referring to this every time I get translucent rubber kits now, and I just make sure I'm not ordering too much. But, you know, for white rubbers, I'm good. I've got basically every size, two and three quarter, weird size. Um, you got your 3 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, all different size post rubbers. Oh, wait, I even got some, um, I got some rubbers in there. Those guys, it's not supposed to be in that bag. Four inch, um, down to one. Uh, one and a quarter, they're not used as often. Five inch. Um, we got my shooter tips. That was leftovers from Playboy. These green ones are leftover from X-Files, but uh, three quarter inch. I've got my, um, these rubbers, what do you call those again? Uh, one inch, three and a half inch. So as you can see, three eighths, seven sixteenths, and common two and a half inch uh, T rubbers, post cap rubbers. It goes on on three inch, and then all kinds of miscellaneous other stuff. And then as a backup, look at this. This is a whole bag of flipper rubbers I've acquired over the years. The OG flipper red flipper rubbers, kind of pinkish ones. Those are good. I've got bags full of black rubbers, and I've got. Some real old rubbers. I don't even know why I'm keeping those, but then all kinds of miscellaneous. So I'm pretty much set. Except now that I'm starting to do translucent rubbers, I don't really want to do all that all over again for translucent because that's going to be a thousand dollars in friggin' rubbers because they're not as cheap as white rubber. So that's why I'm trying to order pretty much exactly what I need for translucent. But if you want to save some money when ordering your even white rubbers, go up to the next tier. Public service announcement from uh, Eden Stam. All right, final tour, and then I will wrap up this video. Let's turn off the flash. I've got my overhead lights off, and we'll see what this looks like naturally. The back box is, um, it doesn't have the translate on it so it's adding some extra light that won't normally be there but that's okay led coin returns or coin slots and here we go i haven't really done much other than the coin door lights and one other small thing since the last uh, take there and it is my center ramp, I installed it. How cool does that look? With the red LEDs underneath. And I got my plastic back reinstalled. 
My truss LED lighting is looking pretty good. This thing is turning out pretty friggin' sexy. LEDs has got to be the best bang for your buck in terms of mods. Like, uh, I would say this is probably in the neighborhood of 170 bucks worth of LEDs. That's my guess. Maybe even 150. But yeah, there you have it. How does that look? Boom. I'm very pleased with that. Alright, see you guys in the next one.